this, the latest Set to Screen podcast, we're going to deal with the subject of music. In the storytelling process, music has been something that I've never been able to disconnect. The application of music can be done in a very supportive, background way. Or it can be used in a very foreground, demonstrative manner. In Moulin Rouge, of course, it's a, it's a musical. So you're, instead of saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, you're expressing it musically. But I love you until the end. One of the things that sets him apart as a director is that he recognises the great value of collaboration and not just one-on-one -on -one collaboration with one composer. On all the films I've worked on with him, we've managed to assemble great music teams. My name is David Hirschfelder. I'm the composer for Australia. My name's Simon Ledley and I'm the music editor on the film. Hi, I'm Felix Ma. I've been working on this film in the role of additional music. What was so great about David, and I've done this on all my other films, is that he was able to surround himself by so many other interesting collaborators. And I've been able to work very directly from everyone from Aboriginal singers to the Pigrams, who are direct descendants of the Filipino band that actually appear in the ball scene in the film. As well as disparate artists like John Butler, who is a very contemporary folk rock artist, and even the great Elton John. Then there's a kind of melting pot and a kind of alchemy that happens amongst those people. Baz is the person who unites that team and makes that work. So whether it's David Hirschfelder or Felix Ma, who brings this folk expertise, or Stephen Pigram, who lives up in the Kimberley region and, and brings you know, the flavours of, of that part of the country to the music. One of the key steps in the process of creating the music for this film was to look very specifically, almost like a musicologist, at the kind of music that the characters would have been experiencing. What's fascinating is that in this place, at this time, there was a sort of mixture of everything from, from country and western, which was very popular, to Australian bush, music, guitar influences and also sort of Filipino influences and then there's the period music influences so you know big bands and particularly big band sound um, filtered through the north of Australia which was you know big band instruments with you know a bunch of guys playing ukuleles and guitars over the top. The other crucial thing is that in the film the main character, played by Brandon Waters, Nulla, who is a mixed-race Aboriginal child, is special in that he's being identified by his grandfather as a singer. I've been thinking I'm going to sing her to me. Make the land sing. In Aboriginal culture, law and wisdom and story is passed not by the written word, but by singing. Singing is a huge part of Aboriginal culture. And Brandon's character, Nulla, is a magical, special singer. And there's even a sequence in the film where the ability of King George, the Aboriginal elder, to sing characters across land, almost like GPS. The songs David is singing in the film are in fact David's songs. We worked not only with David but also with the traditional songman from, from his area, Richard Biren Biren, to make sure that there was this authenticity which is very important to, to what this film is about. Well, in the context of film uh, language, composer means uh, creating the music 
that underscores the movie, that there's, is the hidden, the hidden wallpaper sonically that actually drives the, the narrative with, um, with melodies, with rhythm, with um, musical atmosphere. Sometimes it takes a more dominant role. <laughs> You don't want to end up with this effect that, that it feels like the music's yelling at you the whole time because that's, you want to have peaks and troughs. Sometimes when you put a piece of music to a scene you suddenly get this feeling like it adds a new dimension to that scene. You start to feel the scene and I suppose that's what music does, it, it adds feeling. The music can actually change your perception of what would normally be a completely innocuous shot, it can suddenly be imbued with a, you know, a doom. Or it can be imbued with joy. Music helps sort of alter the mood in a subtextual way and um, it's quite devious and one has to be very careful not to overdo it but when it's done in the right balance it's, it's a very powerful way at um, enhancing the, the journey. Our first film, Strictly Ballroom, was actually also the first film I scored on a computer and I, I've been scoring with Logic Pro since um, the mid-90s. I was really, really lucky because um, I came to this just at the time that computers literally started. You know, I literally had one of the very first Macs and we were running you know, music programs on that from day one, literally from day one. Most of my work is done hunched over my power book or out and about running around with an iPod in one hand you know, some hard drives in another hand because in many ways what my job's about is getting music from one person to another, getting somebody to respond to it and then getting it off into somebody else's hands. Pretty much whatever I can think of, you can do. And that's great on a film like this where Baz is just as likely to turn around and say, you know, it would be really good if this was, you know, rah, 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 and we can go, okay, let's give it a try and see if we can do it. It allows you to do things and the freedom to do stuff that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. So it's fantastic. I have a whole orchestra at my fingertips, a virtual orchestra, residing in this computer system behind me. And the keyboard that I have is, is sort of like a, a musical version of an alphanumeric keyboard that you would type letters into, except this keyboard is a piano keyboard and I can play notes. I can address every single instrument of an orchestra that I have there in a virtual system of some 120 virtual instruments. By doing it that way and using virtual technology, I can create a synthetic mock-up. And so Baz can get an idea of the architecture of the orchestral music before we go and actually record it with the orchestra. I look at the mock-up, the orchestral mock-up, as a pointer a pointer to where we're going. It's not where we are, it's just showing us where we're going. You can conduct a piece of music a hundred different ways, really, and all, of, all of which can be equally valid. So in this movie scoring environment, you're finding, you're searching to find the way which is the most valid interpretation of the music to realise ultimately the director's vision for that scene. You hear the mock-up done on, on the computer and then when you hear the orchestra playing it, you go, ah, oh, that sounds so much better. sit and watch the movie without any music and it's already impressive, but once you add the music to it, I mean, it's gonna be a, a full body experience, I can tell you. Keep going, just, just keep going all day. In fact, I want that on loop, that's going to be my ringtone. 